and greetings to YouTube. Welcome to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. We've got a conflagration of solar activity here. NOAA forecasting geomagnetic storms for an extended period throughout the day today on June 15th. First thing we showed here is the SDO 24-hour video in 171 angstroms. The house favorite. Massive number of sunspots here. Radio flux all the way up to 146 solar flux units, which was, as far as smooth monthly values, the highest point solar cycle 24 reached. So now we are in solar cycle 25, and we are years ahead of schedule. It looks like it's going to be a much more significant solar sunspot cycle than the last. Next, looking at the last four hours of magnetohydrodynamic pressure, again, NOAA forecasting extended periods of geomagnetic storm today. At the moment, things are actually kind of calm. Um, perhaps NOAA forecasting a little more direct coronal mass ejection strike than what we're actually seeing. But at the moment, that's the last four hours of magnetohydrodynamic pressure. The scale you're looking at there is nanopascals. Next, Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. It's scaled in nanotesla. Again, like the last video, it is the last four hours. It's showing you the most likely locations for aurorae and for induction into power lines, pipelines, railroads, etc. So we did see a brief period of geomagnetic unrest. Again, NOAA forecasting extended periods of geomagnetic storm KP5 conditions. So we saw a brief geomagnetic impulse there to bring us to a geomagnetic unrest period. That's the yellow bar. And now we've come back to a KP3, back to geomagnetic calm conditions. Let's take a look at the real-time solar wind. We don't see a huge signal here. But we did see a little bit of an uptick there. Uh, solar wind density came up to about 28 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed made it all the way up to a little over 600 kilometers per second. We also saw the BTBZ shifting around that same time. It's looking like a sputtering hit here. I, it doesn't look like a solid coronal mass ejection strike to me, but that'll be to be determined throughout the day today. Current conditions are oh, just under 11 protons per cubic centimeter, but nearly 600 kilometers per second for the uh, solar wind speed. Next, looking at magnetic data here is the GOES magnetometer readings for the past three days. And you see these little sawtooth readings here. That's typical of plasma from space since some has been arriving. So there is a South Pole current sheet headed this way. It's just reached stereo A, which is this magnetometer out here. That's stereo A. Stereo B is this one over here. And this data is derived from 51 ground-based magnetometers and stereo A and B. Here's our line of sight plot. You can see the sun's B field shown here in blue. That's the field that goes through the magnet, this magnet being the sun. North pole shown in green, south pole shown in red. And let's move to coronal holes, as we've got a well-defined one in the earthly zone. Just moving past the center of the solar disk, it's a North Pole-oriented coronal hole. We've got South Pole ones rotating in. And we can expect to see a couple of years of coronal hole activity. It's part of the sunspot cycle. Sunspots and coronal holes more likely during solar maximum as the solar polar fields reverse. And those are mainly North Pole-oriented coronal holes there. The South Pole ones are over here on the eastern limb. They'll become more defined in a couple of days. Let's take a look at cosmic rays briefly here. Since coronal holes are, in many ways, you could consider them cosmic ray sources since there are solar protons blasting out. And we've seen a dip here in cosmic ray flux, a reduction, significant one there, in the Apatite Neutron Monitor for the past 30 days. That's a 30-day graph right there. So significant downtick at Apatite and at Barentsburg. 
a minor uptick. So a great example of how you can see completely different readings at cosmic ray monitors located at a similar portion to the planet, of, of the planet there. That those are both around the Arctic Circle. And let's go farther south. Here's the Athens-Greece neutron monitor. And we see an uptick there at Athens-Greece as well over the past 30 days. Let's go even farther south to Mexico City. A major downtick there, similar to the Apatite neutron monitor graph. And we'll go back up to Finland to look at Oulu before going to Antarctica. So there's Oulu, Finland's cosmic ray profile. Significant downtick there at Oulu, Finland. DOMB Antarctica. Significant downtick at DOMB Antarctica. And DOMC Antarctica flat over the past 30 days. So we're seeing a bit of a change here coming in the cosmic ray profile, it looks like. And let's move on to sunspots. So here's your sunspot profile. Likelihood of major flares very, very high. Uh, we've got some very complex sunspots here, like 3031, like 3032, 3033. 3034 is a weirdo sunspot. It's right on the equator. That is a lot more common around solar minimum. So that's, a, that's an oddball sunspot, to say the least. We've got again, a very high likelihood of additional solar flares. We also have some protons showing up. We'll get to that in a moment, relativistic particles. And here's your 1700 angstroms wavelength from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Yowzers, a lot of sunspots have shown up. So if you don't view the videos on Twitch, by the time you see this on YouTube, there would have been at least two Twitch streams. Did you know that in 2019, a crack YouTube unit was sent to social media prison for a crime we didn't commit and that we promptly escaped a maximum social, social media stockade to the Internet underground where we survive as producers of fortune? If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find the content, maybe you can hire the Smash team. Hire us at the gold or silver level. Give Smash staff a raise and help us to continue our operations. Our third best seller at our merch is the Do Not Pull Vault the Caldera merch. It's a public service message brought to you at massive personal risk and expense. Once again, give Smash staff a raise by picking up some fresh summer gear. Tell your friends and foes about us. Maybe start a conversation. But by all means, do not pull vault the Caldera. Our finest days lie ahead, folks. Our finest days lie ahead. Don't sabotage yourself. And don't become sabotaged by bad decision making. Don't become part of the lithosphere by ending up in a lava lake. We don't want to inhale you because you've vaporized yourself. So don't pull vault the caldera. If you're going through hell, keep going. And don't forget, don't forget to enter the promo code. Find your vibe now through June 17th to save 20%. It's a great time for merch purchases. Links below the video, as well as on the homepage, smashamash.com. Welcome to the Neo Renaissance. We haven't forgotten about the paper explaining plausibly the solar polar field reversal and sunspot cycles. Visit our links. Visit us on social media. Join our Discord chat if you'd like to send an instant message online. There's a permanent invite link there to our Discord chat at smashamash.com. Once again, welcome to the Neo Renaissance. And here's our GOES X-ray flux, and we did see some relativistic particles arrive. So I think it was this flare right here. See a, a minor spike there in the GOES proton flux. It's just sort of a, it's not a major proton event. And probably this flare is the one associated with the arrival of those relativistic particles. And those primarily end up in Earth's field-aligned currents around the poles, out in space, that is. And let's take a look at the flare profile here in 94 angstroms. 94 angstroms and 131 angstroms, the two best wavelengths to view solar flares. That would be the last 24 hours of the local yellow dwarfs activity. Shout out to El Sol, Helios, whatever you'd like to call 
the sun today. And if you've got a message directly for the sun, the sun reads our YouTube comments. So definitely leave a comment for the sun if you'd like to uh, send a message out. Perhaps we'll read that in a later video. If you're up before dawn, you'll see a planetary pileup as all the planets are gathering on one side of the solar system. The moon, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury all rising ahead of the sun. This is what the sky looks like above Lehigh Valley at the moment. That's where we're located in eastern Pennsylvania. And let's do a solar system forecast. There's where things will be in a week. In a week, we will have a, a crescent waning moon as we approach another new moon here in late June. There is also another coronal mass ejection about to happen. It's I'm expecting it to sort of miss Earth down here to the southwest. That could be propagating at any moment today. Let's look at a little more detail here by looking at Stereo A, located at Lagrange 5, and the Soho Lasco C3, located here at Lagrange 1. So here's Stereo A on the left, and you can see this massive plasma plume here. From that perspective, Earth would be off in this direction. Again, that's where Stereo A is located. It trails Earth, orbitally speaking, and it sees space weather ahead of Earth. That's why it's called Stereo A for ahead. Anyway, we are expecting a coronal mass ejection to happen here. You can already see perhaps that propagating there on the Soho Lasco C3. If I had to guess, and I don't, ahead of time, I would say it's going to miss Earth to the southwest. But that's the current state of affairs. Some minor coronal mass ejections happening there on the far side of the sun. Nothing in the earthly zone at the moment. And let's close out today's video with a great composite here. This is 304 angstroms ionized iron and 100, 304 angstroms ionized helium, rather, and 171 angstroms ionized iron. Great view of the coronal hole and all those sunspots and all the activity for the past 24 hours. It's just spectacular imagery there. From the SDO, thanks for tuning in to the Daily Space Weather. Congratulations on realizing that the Smash News Network least busted name in news exists. Apparently facts are just so inconvenient nowadays that there, there are issues with our videos being recommended on YouTube. I don't know why. It's just the most detailed space weather and solar imagery available on the internet. Thanks for tuning in, and may that solar wind be at your back.